nerds, what's up? Today's video is going to be a haul and TBR for you guys, so let's get right on into this so we don't take too long. I got quite a few books this month, um, some of which I bought myself with some credit from a used bookstore because I went and sold a bunch of books, so I bought some more books with the credit. Some of them are stuff that I've been sent for by publishers, and one is a very belated Christmas present. Let's start with the Christmas present. My mom gave me a the book of awesome women, Boundary Breakers, Freedom Fighters, Shiro's, and Female Firsts by Becca Anderson. So this is just kind of like little synopses of people who did amazing things throughout history women specifically. It's so happy looking. Next set of books are all books that I received from publishers. Some of them came unsolicited and I will mention that. Like almost everyone here on booktube, I got a copy of The Ark for The Last Voyage of Poe Blythe by Ali Condi. This is from Penguin Teen. This comes out March 26th of this month, so I am planning on reading this. We'll get to the TBR in just a minute. But this book is a revenge plot of some sort, and Ali Condi is the woman who wrote the Matched series, and I really loved those books back when they were like first released and popular. Um, so I'm really interested to see like how Ali Condi's writing has progressed. And so this book has like a pirate or like ship theme as well as revenge, and I'm into it. It's Poe Blythe is a female character as well. The next book I got also from Penguin Teen, I believe, and this is Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. This is a book about, let me read you the inside, 17-year-old Corelli Corrington may seem harmless, but in fact she's one of Kadara's most skilled thieves and a liar. Varen, on the other hand, is an honest, upstanding citizen of Kadara's most enlightened region, Aeonia. Varen runs afoul of Corelli when she steals a package from him, putting his life in danger. When Varen attempts to retrieve the package, he and Corelli find themselves entangled in a conspiracy that leaves all four of Kadara's queens dead. This is placed on Goodreads as fantasy, so I'm gonna say that it's fantasy, but it definitely also has some historical fiction feelings. I don't know when I'm going to get to this. This came out already, February on the 26th, so this is a new release. This is a finished copy, so I also did receive this. And then these last three books that I got from publishers were asked for or requested. I did receive a copy of The Line Between in exchange for an honors review and this is by Tosca Lee and Tosca Lee is the one who wrote The Progeny and Firstborn. So she wrote those. This is a thriller. I think it's YA. 22 year old. So new adult or adult. When 22 year old Winter Roth is cast out of self-contained doomsday cult New Earth, a mysterious outbreak of rapid early onset dementia is already spreading across the nation. As Winter struggles to start over in a world she's been taught to regard as evil, she finds herself face to face with the apocalypse she's feared all her life, convinced she's made a terrible mistake. Until the night her sister, still a New Earth member, shows up with a set of medical samples that holds the key to decoding the disease and Winter learns there's something far more sinister at play. Oh, so it's kind of like a dystopian thriller. It does say thriller on there. Based on that, it seems more like a mystery, but we'll we'll see. Coming out in April, I have The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston, and I got Geekerella in exchange for an honest review last year, and then this one was on the list for Quirk Books, and I decided immediately I needed to get it because I was given Geekerella last year I was asked to review it and I was like, okay, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. It seemed a little bit too fluffy for me, but oh my God, it was one of the best books of last year. So I saw this on there and I was like, immediately I want that one. I don't even really know what this is about. Teen actress Jessica Stone is one of the stars of one of the biggest movies in the world and she couldn't hate it more. She found out the hard way what it's like to be part of the star field mega fandom, but thanks to the death of her character, Princess Amara, she can finally say goodbye to the franchise and hello to Oscar worthy roles. She just has to s survive Excelsicon first. We're following a new character that was in the first one. That's cool. The last book that I got in exchange for an honest review is The Hero Fant's Daughter by M.F. Sullivan. This is part of a trilogy and it's book one. It's a dystopian by 4042 CE, the Hierophant has risen to global dominance in the backs of his cannibalistic army of genetically modified humans, martyrs. In an era where humanity's permanently cold, intergenerational wars against their long-lived predators seem close to running hot. The Holy Family stands poised on the verge of a complete planetary control. It will take a miracle to save mankind from extinction and to 
keep the plague of martyrdom from spreading to Mars. Dystopian sci-fi. I'm into it and I really like this cover. This last set of books are all the books that I got for basically free. I got them all from the used bookstore that I had credit at. So I got the credit from selling books back. The first one I want to show you is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. This is an adult historical fiction, I think. A haunted odyssey through present day America. A drama of enthralling force and acuity. So it's an adult contemporary, basically. The next book that I picked up was Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I'm so excited. It is a mass market paperback, so I'm not that into that, but this was the only copy that they had and I was really excited to pick it up because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to finish my library copy before it was due. It has a huge trigger warning for rape. It's about this city that is like obsessed with hockey and it turns out that one of the hockey players raped a girl. And so it's about like how all of the city reacts to this situation. Some are good and some are bad. I'm really, really excited to read this. Next two books I got were The Cuckoo's Calling and The Silkworm, both by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling. These are both adult thrillers. They're part of a series. I don't really know a lot about what these are. I just know that they're suspenseful and adult and written by J.K. Rowling, so I want to try them. And then the last little set of books I got was the entire Iron Fae series by Julie Kagawa. So I'm really excited to have this. I already have the first book, but that's fine. I'm gonna get rid of this one and now I have these. I'm excited. I haven't read any of them, but Brittany from Brittany's Book Find is obsessed with this series and me and Brittany have really, really similar reading tastes, so I'm so excited to try these out. They're about their fairies who are royalty and I don't really know anything else, but I'm freaking excited to have all of these. Moving into what I'm planning to read this month. So firstly, I have The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. This is the Sassy Book Club pick for March. This month we are reading this book and it will be on Chelsea's channel on March 29th at 6 p.m. PST and that's all linked down below as well as well as the Sassy Book Club which has a Twitter so you can follow me and Chelsea and all of that good stuff all down below. Joined this month by Julie from Pages and Pens as well as Murphy from Murphy Napier. This is an adult fantasy. It's been around a while. I'm listening to it on audiobook. I've already started it. I haven't read an adult fantasy in a while, so I'm into it. The next book that I'm planning on reading this month is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is the first book of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. We are doing a read-along for this in case you missed that video, which I'll link up below because I have two read-alongs going on coming up this year. This one is with Kaz from Little Book Owl, Red from Little Red Reader, and Chloe from Chloe's Books. And the first one, I believe, is on Kaz's channel. All of that information will be linked down below, but our first live show will be the second week of April for this book. So I gotta finish this so that I can be a part of that. I'm planning on annotating these books. The first time that I read these books, I listened to them on audiobooks, so this will be my first time reading through them. And I'm excited. I freaking love Lainey Taylor's writing. This is about a girl named Karu who is a normal girl who lives in Prague, except for the fact that her hair comes out of her head bright blue like this. And so she's obviously a little magical and we have to read in order to find out how and why and who and what and where, and it's really good. The next book that I'm planning on picking up this month is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I was just talking about this one. I'm really excited. This was actually on my February TBR, like I mentioned earlier, and I didn't get to it and I just really really want to read this so bad. Murphy from Ner Murphy Napier talks about this book a lot and then Chelsea from Chelsea Darling Reads also recently read it and just I think I'm going to love this book and I cannot wait to read it. I'm also planning on picking up The Last Voyage of Poe Blythe this month because it does come out on March 26th and I want to try to get a review up on Goodreads at least before the uh, release date. So I already talked about what this is about, planning on reading this one. Also for the same reason, I'm planning on picking up The Princess and the Fangirl. This comes out on April 2nd, so I wanna try to get at least a Goodreads review up before its release date as well. I'm planning on picking up The Line Between by Tosca Lee. This came out in January, so I'm behind the times already, and I did get a finished copy. It wasn't an arc, so I don't feel as bad, but I definitely need to get to this soon as it was given to me in exchange for review. Now, 
Time for we need to do a Goodreads pick and we need to do a TBR jar. If you haven't watched one of my TBR videos before, I have a TBR jar. I pick three books out of this. All of the books that are in here are on my shelves and then I have to read one of them. The color coding, I finally found, I made a decoder because I'm not an idiot and I knew that I would need it. White ones are dystopian, sci-fi, or paranormal. Yellow are fantasy, magical realism. Green are classics or nonfiction. Purple is contemporary, thriller, or mystery. And then pink is historical fiction. And I did already put all of the new books that I got this month. They're already in here. Okay, we got a green one, so it's going to be a classic or a nonfiction. So the first book I have here is a nonfiction story, and it is called Always Running by Luis Rodriguez. It says La Vida Loca, Gang Days in LA. This is a book that I had picked up because I originally was taking a class that needed it, and then I ended up dropping that class, and I just never got to it. But this book is all about LA gangs, and I live in the LA county. So I was really interested to read this, which is why I never sold it back. Okay. So we've got a dystopian, a sci-fi, or a paranormal. The next book that I picked out was Red Rising, which I believe is a dystopian. It's an adult book, I'm pretty sure, written by Pierce Brown. Everyone on booktube talks about this. I still haven't read it. I probably should get to it. Lastly, Okay, another white one. So dystopian sci-fi or paranormal. Last book that I picked out was a sci-fi and it is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Emma from Emma Books loved this book when she first started booktube. I think she still talks good things about it. This is a book about um, a set of kids who have like superpowers kind of thing and they get used by the FBI to solve crime which is why there's this police tape thing. And the main character's name is Cassie spelled with a C. K's only man. I will be reading one of these three in the month of March for my TBR jar. They go on to Goodreads. I use a random number generator to pick a number off of my Goodreads list and then I will pick three of them. I'll make a poll here for you to vote on which one I should do. Okay, we're recording. Going to my books, my want to read only. I have 514 books on here. I want to have them in number order. Yep, okay, so first number we're looking for is 442. 442, feminists don't wear pink and other lies. Amazing women on what the F word means to them by Scarlett Curtis. So this is an anthology, I'm pretty sure. Collection of essays by a diverse group of celebrities, activists, and artists about what feminism means to them. Okay, next number that we're gonna do is 182. Number two is The Glass Arrow by Kristen Simmons. Once there was a time when men and women lived as equals, when girl babies were valued and women could belong only to themselves, but that was ten generations ago. Now women are property to be sold and owned and bred, while a strict census keeps their numbers manageable and under control. The best any girl can hope for is to end up as some man's forever wife, but most are simply sold and resold until they're all used up. And that last one for you guys is number 18. Oh, that's really up here. Of Poseidon, oh shit. So this is by Anna Banks, and this is a mermaid book. Galen is the prince of Serena, sent to a land, sent to land to find a girl he's heard can communicate with fish. Emma is on vacation at the beach when she runs into Galen, literally, ouch, both teens sense a connection. But it will take several encounters, including a deadly one with a shark, for Galen to be convinced of Emma's gifts. Now if only, if he can only convince Emma that she holds the key to his kingdom, told from both of their points of view, here is a fish out of water story that sparkles with intrigue, humor, and waves of romance. Those are the three books that you guys get to pick for me. Feminists Don't Wear Pink. The Glass Arrow or of Poseidon. So make sure to vote for which one I should read this month. So you have a nonfiction option, a dystopian option, or a fantasy mermaid choice. I'm excited to see what you guys pick for me. So those are all the books I'll be reading in the month of March, my birthday month. It's here. I'm gonna be 26 this year on the 26th. It's my golden year. I'm excited. I have no plans whatsoever for it, but 
we'll see what happens. I have class that day, so the day of my birthday will be boring, but that's fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. What are you planning on reading in March? What's your most anticipated read for this month? I would love to hear it in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and you can always click that little notification bell if you want to be notified every time I post a video. I make videos every Thursday and Saturday, so I'll see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye! I wish I could